Hello and welcome back to Bits and Bobs. Today's video is the life and legacy of King James II, the monarch of the month for November, as voted by you in our monthly community post. So let's begin with James II's history, starting with his father, who is this man here, as you may recognise, King Charles I, and Charles I's wife, James II's mother, Henrietta Maria of France, as we can see there. They had many children, the second of which being the young Prince James, as a second child, who was born on the 24th of October, in 1633. He was born in London and quite fittingly born at St. James's Palace, as we can see here, an old palace used by the royals in the 1600s and still today. And here's a portrait of the young prince, we can see there Prince James in his London home and he enjoyed being educated with alongside his brother who would then go on to be Charles II. Now, things changed as the Civil War broke out in 1642 and of course the crown, the monarchy and the royal family had to flee from London and the Cromwellian forces that sought to capture and kill them along with the parliament as there was a big obviously civil war between parliament and the monarchy and they moved to the royal stronghold that, that was set up in Oxford. We can see here the old 1600s Oxford town where James and his father Charles I spent many years during the war. Now, whilst his father was fighting the Civil War, young James went to the university there, the University of Oxford, of course, Oxford University, a famous university, and the young prince became a master of the arts during his time at Oxford University in the 1640s. However, it was not long till the parliamentary forces of Oliver Cromwell moved in and seized the stronghold at Oxford, capturing Oxford as a parliamentary Cromwellian place, and they even captured James II, not the king, not Charles I, but James II was captured and held at the Tower of London. But by the influence and power still held by Charles I, James II, or Prince James then of course, was freed a few years later and fled in exile to France for more safety so he was not captured again. Now of course it wasn't long until Charles I lost his head and then of course his son Charles II rose to the throne of Scotland although England was still ruled by Cromwell for a few more years for quite a while until in 1662, the restoration of the monarchy, Charles II became the king of England. Now, during this time, Charles II's brother, James II, or Prince James still, was doing some fighting for the French against the Irish. He joined the French military and was fighting some Irish uprisings in the name of still on the side of the king and parliament wanted the Irish uprisings to be stopped and the French were helping as well. Now, we can see here a portrait of a middle-aged James in his sort of battle armour there you can see with a quite long hairdo in that portrait. Now, during this time, the king, King Charles II, still had no legitimate children to inherit the throne from him. So the next in line was still his brother, Prince James, and of course would then become James II. So James II was the heir apparent throughout this time in the later half of the 1600s. Now during this time he married, he married Anne of Hyde in 1660. However, 11 years later in 1671 she did die, leaving Prince James a widower, although two years later in 1673 he married again, Mary of Medina, as we can see there, the portrait of her to the right of the screen. Now between these two wives, James II had 27 children. I won't go through all of his children, and sadly many of them did die during childhood, but we'll mention a few of the key children of James II, or at the time, of course, Prince James, as I must reiterate. One of his daughters, Mary, would go on to become Mary II, a Queen of England, and another of his daughters would be Queen as well, his daughter Anne, who would go on to be Queen Anne, as we can see there. So two of his daughters became Queens, or monarchs, of England. So there we go. Now, of course, Charles II is still the king at this time, but he did die on the 6th of February, 1685, leaving the throne to no children. So, James II came to the throne in early 1685, with his coronation happening later that year at Westminster Abbey. And we can see here a few pictures of his coronation, which wasn't too expensive. He wanted it to be quick and formal. Now, his coronation was a popular event, and in the start of his reign, he was a popular king, as many regarded him as a good king to start with, and were happy, there are even reports of celebrations on the street on the day of his coronation as a new king for the English throne. However, then came trouble, because soon after becoming king, James faced a rebellion in southern England, led by his nephew, the Duke of Monmouth, and another rebellion in Scotland, led by Archibald Campbell, 9th Earl of Agril. Monmouth and Agril both began their expeditions from Holland, where Prince James's nephew and son-in-law, the Prince of Orange, had neglected to detain or stop their recruitment efforts. And this William of Orange will come back to as he will become William III. It's a little bit of foreboding there of um, maybe not going so well in the end for James II as William III is already against him and will later become king. The Scottish uprising was easily subdued as only 300 men attended with Agril and Agril himself was then taken to the Tower of London and beheaded for his crimes of, of opposing the king 
and the natural order. The other uprising from the Duke of Monmouth was also subdued by the king's forces. Although he had more men, he was also from the south and was more wealthy and had obviously funding. He was also subdued and again beheaded at the Tower of London for his crimes against the king and country. Although the country started to turn against James II, as he was a Catholic, and the country swayed more towards the Protestant ideals and religion, and William III, or Prince William of Orange, was a Protestant. And he was invited, invited by leading parliamentary figures to come and overthrow his Catholic cousin and invade the forces of James II, becoming what they believed by God the rightful Protestant king, and still from the same family, of course, as a cousin, which he did, exiling James II to France once again. So James II is back in France, and now his cousin has the throne, William III, the Protestant king. Meaning James II had a very short reign, between 1685 to 1688. Although he was a good king, he was the wrong religion for the time. His life was a bit longer, from 1633 to 1701, so he lived the remaining years of his life in France in exile, but did make a few attempts to regain the throne. All were very unsuccessful, and William III remained on the throne. So there we go. Please do comment down below any extra facts about James II that you know and would like to add. And of course, as well, please do subscribe if you've learned something new and enjoyed. Thank you for watching, as always, and we'll see you again soon for some more coins in the future on Bits and Bobs.